Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome in to a huge episode, the 100th episode Woo! of the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. Wow, wow. I'm your host, Matt Kobold, here with my guy, Max Faulkner, and joining us for a second time, our Pittsburgh representative, Will Townsend. Will, what's going on, my guy? Not much, man. Thank you bringing me back appreciate you david and shout out to you guys for the 100 show oh yeah oh thank you hell thank yeah you. hell yeah max how you doing and what do you think about this 100th episode cool breezy a lot of podcasts don't make it this long they don't make it to 100 episodes right we stay oh. consistent we keep on posting every day we keep getting subscribers every day speaking of which real quick everybody look at this we got 1.59 thousand subscribers. That's Whoa. an additional 70? 70 from last week? That's that's Jeez. about 70 per week here in the last couple of months. Jeez Louise. Jeez Louise. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We couldn't have done it with all your support out there. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Keep bringing them in. But 100 episodes, Cole Breezy? Oh, my goodness. I, I, I woke up this morning. You know, I, ha I had a glee in my heart. Okay, I got oh, a good, got a good lift in. You know, I was feeling it. I was chest? feeling it, man. Chest? Uh, not chest today. Legs and legs, shoulders and arms. Well, why are you I did pushing, chest man? yesterday though. Why are you pushing? I'm not gonna I'm about to about to stand up and do squats for you, Cole. You could do some Jeez. squats. Jeez. You could. Jeez, keep it in the pants. Keep it in your pants right, with right. you. Right. <laughs> Woke up, had a good lift, and then what else, Queef? Nothing much, man. We do. We're at uh, we're at two thirty here to almost three. Well, almost three o'clock, actually. Uh, you know, not, not much we can do. Not much nice. else you can do. Yeah. How about nice. you, Cole Brazier? How how are you celebrating? Uh, it's a good good day. You know, uh, it's it's turning to summer. We got May 29th right now, so uh, my school year is ending. Summer programs are starting, so I got the day off today. You know, a little transition, nice. so I get to hang out with my guy Will and and do this 100th episode with you, Max, where we've been talking about for a couple of weeks now that we're going to be doing a top 10 all-time NBA players countdown. Love it. Love it. Max, but before we get into that, what's that poll that we've had out for maybe three, three four weeks now? Yeah, no, I think we're going on three, Cole Breezy. It's still going to go there up until the finals because the finals are about to start, everybody. Uh, sorry about your Pacers, Cole Breezy. That was, oh, man. Ah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, shout, that was, shout that out. was quick. That was shout quick. Out, shout out, Pacers. You know, late leads with uh, with under under a couple minutes remaining in the fourth quarter in games one, three, and four. So I'm not going to yeah. sit here and say that it could be 3-1 Pacers, but damn it, it could very well be 2-2 or 3-1 Pacers, 3-1 Celtics. That That's that's the most competitive sweep I've ever seen, okay? Pacers Pacers fumbled two, if not three, of those games. Showing their youth, Cole Breezy. Once again, we said it last week, the Pacers have a lot to look forward to in the upcoming years. But, hey, you know, you get swept, uh, that feels that feels pretty bad. You got any brooms in the house, Cole Breezy? You've been, you been sweeping lately? Or uh, or did you just toss them all out because you don't want any tears on your Wilt Chamberlain jersey you're wearing? Hey, well, speaking of these jerseys, we'll get to that. <laughs> but I thought you said I thought you said brews, but no brooms. I keep brooms. I got a I got a broom. I got a broom on the back porch, but no, I haven't touched it. I haven't touched keep it. it outside, huh? Yeah, uh, you don't you don't want that bad juju in the house. You know who used it yesterday though, uh, Lena. Lena Becker. So shout out Lena. Her and Jake are here with the girls and dogs staying for about a week. There goes Jake right there. So shout out them. Lena used the broom last, last night. Shout out Lena. Yeah. Uh, Will, <laughs> Will, you got any words on the Pacers? Definitely a good season for them guys. I definitely didn't think they were going to make it that far, but I definitely enjoyed watching them this season for sure. Mm. Yeah, not a lot of people had expectations like that. But Max, get into that poll for us. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we went a little off track there. Yeah, go Pacers, but, go Pacers. Yeah, sure. We have the little talk. And we're we're all from Indiana. Well, sorry, not Will, but go Breezy. Now we're from Indiana. We got to show and, a little Pacers. And, and Lita and Jake that are here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you yeah, go. There you got go. A couple of Indiana people here. Sure, sure. <laughs> so our poll is NBA's biggest douchebag for this year, 2024, and oh, it's heating up. Go Breezy. We have a record, a record votes, and that is surpassing what we had. For NFL's biggest douchebag this year, which is usually the big dog. Okay, that only gets me excited for what's coming next because 
you know, more and more votes are coming in. This is good stuff. This is really good stuff. So please br- keep bringing in those votes for NBA's Biggest Douchebag. It is located on YouTube, and that that's the big one. Why don't you just go ahead and vote on YouTube? Instagram's not really working, so who cares? All right, <laughs> let's, just, <laughs> let's just focus on YouTube. There's a poll on there, as well as we have the clips and the shorts. Feel free to leave mm-hmm. it in the comments, everybody. We will take yeah. your vote right from there. Yep, check those out. Draymond Green, Jonte Porter, Josh Giddy, Pat Beverly, LeBron James, Anthony Davis. Josh Giddy. Josh Giddy. Yeah, okay. Josh Giddy. Okay, seven guys there, all worthy candidates. Will, who gets your vote this season? Oh, right here on the pod. Tough, tough, tough. <laughs> I broke it down to two people. I said Giddy and Draymond. Mm. Both big time impacts on the situations they're both in. And, you know, I think, honestly, they're both going to be going to a different team this season also. Yeah. Wow. With everything wow. going yeah. on. Yeah. 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 So, so who takes, who takes your vote then? Giddy or Draymond? Draymond. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I could have guessed that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I see him bumping his gums with the TNT crew now. Oh, so gosh. whatever, whatever, Draymond. Yeah. He's got to be up there. He's got to be up there, Max. I'm excited to uh release the results of that poll uh, during the nba finals so yes can't wait for that which start next thursday january 6th oh. let's, let's not sleep on that wow. wow max anything else before we get into this top 10 all-time nba countdown this is so exciting here on our 100th episode that we do a top 10 nba's best in i mean ever ever uh we've mm-hmm. never done this before hey we never had 100 episodes right so come on hey come on. Come let's on do now. something new let's i'd have a big one fresh. and obviously everyone if you have a different top 10 you got a different top player leave it in mm-hmm. the comments we would like to have a little debate with you because i know right now between cole breezy and will and i we're gonna have a different top 10 i'm guaranteeing mm-hmm. it all right oh yeah so oh, let's yeah. see let's do what uh let's roll come on let's get rolling so not only the three of us made a top 10, but two other NBA representatives for us, Zach Widlowski and Jack Alvarado, they sent in their top 10s with some comments. And another guy, uh, he got invited to do it. We know him here as Queef Wilson. And, you know, he had two and a, two and a half weeks to break it down, but decided not to send one in when it came down to it. Oh, no show. Will, what do you, what do you think about that? Your guy, Taylor Wilson. Taylor, no call, no show. Always fumbling when it's crunch time. <laughs> <laughs> Always fucking fumbling. All right. So I took those five top tens, averaged them out for a top ten don't tell mama countdown. Okay. Mm-hmm. At number 10, ladies and gentlemen, let's first let's also let's shout out the guys also receiving votes. Okay, guys that didn't make the top 10, but made some people's top 10s. Mm-hmm. Got four extra names on this list. Kevin Durant slipped in a 10 spot for somebody. Dirk Nowitzki slipped in a slipped in a nine spot for somebody. Dr. J mm-hmm. there at number 12. Okay, let's throw in the doctor. And while we're on it, let's get to get into our jerseys. That's He's nice got jersey. the doctor on the day. I got freaking Wilt the Stilt, the Big Dipper, Chamberlain. Okay, when he rock chalk that Kansas Jayhawks. Max, who you got? I got Timmy D, but a USA jersey, baby. Timmy D, Hell number yeah. 13 on Team USA. Gotta love it. Hell yeah. Tim Duncan. So, do- so Dr. J, Julius Irving comes in at number 12, the Don't Tell Mama top 10. And number 11, the first guy left out. He was the first guy left out for me also. Hakeem the Dream. Me too. Elijah. Just so we're clear, he was number 11 you for too. me. Wow. Yes, yes. Wow. Yep. Okay. So our number 10 all-time NBA player for the Don't Tell Mama Sports podcast from the Boston Celtics is going to be Larry Legend. Oh, Larry. The hick from French Lick, Larry Bird. Okay, this guy played 13 seasons. He had three MVPs, three championships, two finals MVPs, 10 All-NBA selections, three All-Defensive selections, 12 All-Star appearances, and he was the 1980 Rookie of the Year. Max, what do you got for me on Larry Bird? Larry Legend, baby. When you think of basketball, these are this is one of the big names that everyone knows. Okay, even if you even if you're young, all right, you're 10 years old, you're just getting into the NBA. Somehow, Larry Bird was put into the conversation. All right, Larry is a legend, man. I don't know if you already said that he's part of the Hall of Fame, but he's also part of the 75th anniversary team. Let's not sleep on that. 
All right, that's a that's a big time accomplishment. A guy that averaged in his career 24.3 points per game, 10 rebounds per game, 6.2 assists per game. This guy, it was a small forward shooting guard, shooting 49.6 from the field, 37.6 three pointer. 88.6 from the free throw line, and hey, he played defense with 1.7 steals per game. Larry Legend on my list, Cole Breezy, was number, I'm sorry, was number eight. Okay, so I know yep. in our poll we have him at number 10, but I have him at number eight. Eight for you, number 10 for me, number nine for Will here. What do you think about Larry Legend, Will? Mr. Sharpshooter. So he's pretty much Kevin Durant before there was Kevin Durant. If you think about it height-wise, and the position they play, always key, always dependable. And uh, like I said, I think Reggie Miller took a couple, you know, pieces out of his pages for his game also. Yeah. Yep. I like that. Larry Bird from French Lick, Indiana. Let's not sleep on that. French Lick. French Lick. I don't even, is that Go still, visit. That's still a place? That's still a place? Go, uh, you know who took me there one time? Your boy, Jace. Jace Gordon. Shout out, my, Jace. My boy. You, you, you're the one that hung out with him. <laughs> That's my boy. I'll I claim him. Yeah, That's yeah. my guy. That's my guy, Jay. I don't have Jace in my phone number. I, I've never really? had his number in my phone. Really? Ever. Really? Not really. Okay. Well, can I ask a bro my... for his number? Hey, bro, can I get your number? That's <laughs> <laughs> Stop. That's that's my guy. He took me to French Lick one time. Shout out, Jace. So, South Indi Southern Indiana. Go check it out. Our number nine player for the all-time NBA, Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. Top 10 is going to be the big diesel, the yeah. big Aristotle, Shaquille O'Neal, okay? This guy played 19 seasons. He won one MVP, kind of surprising, but four rings, three finals MVPs, 14 All-NBA, three All-Defensive, 15 All-Star appearances, the 1993 Rookie of the Year, and a mm -hmm. two-time scoring champion. Max... What do you got for me on Shaq Diesel? Shaquille O'Neal had the best swag when it came to the NBA. All right. This, this is a guy that in the press conferences always had something funny to say. And it's still to this day, you know, he's on the, the TNT crew or he's just an analyst or he's going out buying uh, children bikes. And like the things that he does right now is he's just an incredible human being. Okay, I love Shaquille O'Neal. Loved him ever since I was a kid watching him in the 90s and early 2000s. Dude, a, a, such a dominating force down low where we don't have big men like him anymore. We, I don't know if we ever will, where it's just a back down, shimmy left, shimmy right, hook shot, dunk. You just don't see it anymore. You know, Shaq has to shoot the three-pointer now, right? You know, it's, it's, it's a bit different than it used to be, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss that. But Shaquille O'Neal on my list, everybody, he was number 10. Okay, he did make my top 10 because what a, what a beast. What a beast. Hell of a beast. Uh most dominant player in his in his era you had him 10 max i had him nine will you were the highest out of anybody you had the big diesel at number four. Ooh, i love it T tell us about shaq like you guys said i grew up watching shaq especially for orlando oh man young shaq was different mm -hmm. he was like a guard at his position but he was shifty man uh him and penny together was honestly the future of Kobe and Shaq, how it is now. So growing up watching Shaq, unstoppable. The only person that could really, you know, wouldn't back down from it was uh, Hakeem. Yeah. Yeah. Those Houston, Orlando, mm -hmm. that finals match up there. Yeah. I like that. The number eight player on the Don't Tell Mama all time top 10 is going to be Timmy D, boys. Hey, Timmy Hopkin, Mr. My Fundamental. Boy. My boy. Played 19 seasons, all with the Spurs. He's got two MVPs, five rings, three finals MVPs, 15 All-NBAs, 15 All-Defensive teams, which is the most out of anybody on this list, 15 All-Star appearances, the 1998 Rookie of the Year. Max, he was your, probably still is, your favorite player. Tell us about your guy, Timmy D. Tim Duncan. There's nothing. He's another player. There, it's it's just hard to believe that there will ever be a guy like him because he's so fundamentally sound. All right, he didn't get he didn't get pushy with the reps. If he did get a technical foul, that that's the big story of the day for all the analysts uh -huh. out there. Oh, Tim Duncan got a technical. Oh, we got to talk about this. What do he say? We got to figure it out. He he, how he kept his composure on the court always, and all he would do when it comes to his teammates like Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, if he wanted the ball, just he would just stare him down. Man, didn't even talk to him. Just 
stare him down, like, give me the ball. You know, like you already knew in his eyes, give me the ball. But uh, also really funny, uh, if you, uh, if we didn't know, because he is so fundamentally sound, apparently he was a good shit talker. And his shit talking wasn't like, you know, oh, fuck you, man. Oh, you, you piece of shit. No, it was, any, it was just more like, uh, well, almost, man. You almost had me. Almost, you know, <laughs> gotcha. Got you on that one. You know, it's like, it's those little things that grinded like Kevin Garnett's gears and things like that. Mm. Love Tim Duncan, my favorite player of all time. I have him number seven on my list. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable what he was able to accomplish. Hell of a career number seven for you. Number seven for me, but not in Will's top 10. Oh, Will, Will. breaking my heart. Oh, my. Oh. Explain the disrespect why you hate Tim Duncan. Definitely don't hate Tim Duncan. It was tough. It was a tough situation for me. So uh, out of Tim, it was out of Tim, Hakeem, Kareem, and Shaq. And I had to go off of, based off of how I felt. But honestly, Tim Duncan's still the man. Part of the Twin Towers. Great player. Definitely, definitely was tough for me. That was a tough one. Go Brazy, real quick, because uh, Will Will's not going to agree. Can we say Tim Duncan's the best power forward ever? Well, just looking at this list right now. On my top ten, it's centers. Yeah. I got a bunch of centers, not a power forward. Tim Duncan's a power forward. I think I got to give that to you. Damn right. Damn straight. Will? Damn. Hakeem's a center. Hakeem was a center. Just so right, we're clear. Right. So best power forward. I would say, yeah, I would give him the nod over Carmelo. I'll give him the nod. Ooh, that's a good, no yeah. good, good name call. The mailman. Too. The mailman. Good, name, good name, Nicole. Moses Malone. Throw him in the mix, maybe. Was he a center? Him. Wasn't he a center? Yeah, maybe. I thought he might have. He's not on our top 10, everybody. Nope. nope. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but I will give a shout out to Moses Malone right now because he was a six time rebounding champ. So nice. Hit the glass. Hit nice. the glass. Heck yeah. Number seven for the all-time top 10 NBA players that don't tell Mama Sports podcasts. The guy with more championships than anybody. 11 rings for Bill Russell. Woo-wee. I'm sorry. Did you just say number seven? Number seven. Oh, my. You guys don't, yeah. you guys don't know basketball. Well, hold what, on, what, 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 what the hell? What? Hold on. Stop. Stop it. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, here, boys. It shows over. Gotta, shows this, everybody. This is the, We're not this official anymore. This is the first anymore. time someone got worked up here. Uh -oh. This is when everyone first, unsub got everyone's going to gonna unsubscribe. <laughs> Number seven, Bill Russell. Five MVPs, 11 championships. The finals MVP was not around when Bill was around, so you can't, can't hold that against him. 11 all-NBA selections. Defensive team was not, not around when he was around. 12 all-star appearances. He was the a four-time rebounding champion, and like I said, eleven champions championships. I believe five more than Kareem. Uh, and of course, there's a few Boston Celtics with eight, but Bill Russell has more than anybody. Max, you got all worked up because you got Bill Russell number two. Number two, most championships of all time, next to who? Phil Jackson, the coach. Come on. If we're throwing in coaches, sure. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll do a coach and pull another time. Dude, this guy averaged 15 points per game and 22.5 rebounds per game. All right? They, and again, you already brought it up, Cole Breeze. 4.3 assists, by the way. But you brought it up. They didn't keep track of defense. This guy was definitely getting blocked shots and steals while they're at it. They didn't keep track of that, which is ridiculous. I'm looking, I was looking all over for him. I'm like, what? Really? They don't have this? Ridiculous. Hall of Famer, 75th anniversary team. The fact that he's seventh all time, you guys are sleeping. You oh, are sleeping here. in your beds with a nightcap and a nightshade on. You're, you're those kind of old people. Actually, old people would be agreeing with me, by the way. So you guys are too young, all right, sleeping in your underwear uh, with, with, without the covers out and the fan going, boosting up the electricity bill. Where am I going with this? I'm, I'm, I'm just flustered. I'm flustered. <laughs> you're flustered. You're flustered over there. Number two for you, Max. Number five for me. Number five for me. And number five for Zach. And uh, Jack did not have him. Jack oh. did not have him. And Will had a number 10. Will, number you know, 10, Bill Russell. You know, okay, I'll take a number 10 real quick. Uh, Jack, uh, if I had a piece of paper, let's just crumple that up and just throw it, 
throw it behind it. Yeah, we don't we don't care about his top ten no more. All right, <laughs> go ahead, Will. I mean, I got him at number ten just because you know um, he's before my time. Didn't really see that many highlights on him, but if we're going off of rings, he would be number one hands down, no question. If we're going off of rings, yeah. Number two for Max, number five for me, number ten for Will. Not even in Jack's top ten. Ugh. Bill Russell. R.I.P. Bill. R.I.P. <laughs> number two all time in my book. <laughs> The number six player all time NBA. If they don't tell him I'm a sports podcast. Also, R.I.P. Kobe Bean Bryant. Ah, man. Number six, cumulative for us. He played for the Los Angeles Lakers, boys. A lot of Lakers on this list. He had only one MVP, but he had five rings, two finals MVPs, five, 15 all NBAs, 12 all defensive. 18 all-star appearances, all-rookie team, and a two-time scoring champion. I watched a lot of Kobe Bryant highlights before my games in high school. I, I loved Kobe Bryant. It might it might have might have influenced the nickname Kobe Breezy. Who knows? But <laughs> <laughs> I love Kobe Bryant. R.I.P. One of my favorite players, maybe my second favorite behind Reggie. But love Kobe. Number six overall. Number eight for me, Max. I had Kobe number nine in the top 10. What a phenomenal player. Kobe Breezy, it's so funny. I, I guess my uh, my spell check when I was texting you, I texted you my list and I typed in Kobe and it came up Kobe Breezy. So then I sent to Kobe Breezy Bryant. So you might have something <laughs> there, Kobe Breezy, where, where you, that's how you got your nickname. But Kobe be. Bryant, uh, man, it, it's, it's such a sad day. I will never, it, it's another one of those deaths where you knew where you were. I literally was walking with my brother in Orange County, California. A guy pulled over and said, did you guys hear? We're like, hear what? Like, Kobe Bryant died. I don't even know this guy, obviously. We're like, no, and I didn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And sure enough, it was, it, it happened. So really sad. But man, him playing on the court, the things that he would do, the, the, the athleticism, the defense that he played, he, he almost reminded you of Michael Jordan just because he did both. You know, he did it both. He always he did it all. Obviously, he, there's a little bit of hate because of him and Shaquille O'Neal, right? That, that whole rift that broke the Lakers apart. But at the end of the day, hey, Kobe got a few more rings after uh, Shaq left, as mm -hmm. well as Shaq got a few more rings after, after he decided to go to Miami, right? So One more, water yeah. under the bridge, all right? They still were able to accomplish big things without each other. I love Kobe Bryant. Gonna rest in peace. Kobe Bryant, probably the closest thing that we've seen to Michael Jordan, in my opinion. Yeah. Number Kobe, number nine for you, number eight for me. And he was really carried by Jack and Will here. Jack had him number four. Will had him number three. Ooh. What you got for me on Kobe? I can't believe he's not in y'all's top three. <laughs> One MVP, I guess. I mean, One. Killer, in what MVP? Killer, killer Instinct. Go-to player. He definitely got to be in your top three for go-to player and clutch shots. Yeah. 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 And, and like, you know, he's a coach on the, on the floor, so he knows everybody's position. He knows where they should be at. Everything. You know what I mean? He's like the perfect coach player on the team. Definitely love Kobe. Yeah. Definitely love Kobe. Just, I got number eight. I got number eight. Number nine. Yeah. The number five player. But don't tell Mama all time top 10 NBA players is going to be Magic Johnson, boys. Okay. Magic Johnson. And he was a three time MVP, five time champion, three time finals MVP, 10 time All NBA, a 12 time All Star. He was all rookie in 1980, and he was a four time assist champ and a two time steal champion. Max. What do you got for me on Magic Johnson? Magic Johnson, man, uh, before our time, sadly wasn't able to watch him ever, really, just highlights, right? Uh, but, you know, this is a guy that averaged 19 points per game, seven rebounds per game, and 11.2 assists per game. In the 80s, this guy's averaging like a triple-double? That's that's unheard of. That's unheard of, other than Michael Jordan. Uh, but uh, shot big 52. The, oh, nice call. Nice call. Throwing the big uh, O. Yeah, nice call. Uh, shot 52% from the field. 
Yeah, he not too big on three pointers, thirty point three, but eighty four point eight percent from the free throw line. Dude, five time NBA champion, three time MVP, three times final MVP, ten time All NBA, twelve time All Star, Hall of Famer, seventy fifth anniversary team. The bummer is, is that obviously he just, uh, you know, he didn't wrap his willy, and that is the truth. If we want to go there, uh, come on now, you know, let's. Uh, Let's be safe, okay? Don't be silly. Wrap your willy. Don't be a fool. Wrap your tool. And this guy was like, you know, I'm just going to fuck whatever I see walking. <laughs> so, so, but hey, he, he, apparently he's, uh, he's negative now. So, you know, he, he, got, he got the right treatment. So that's good. That's good. But I don't want to bash on, on anything else because his career was phenomenal. His career was phenomenal. I didn't realize he actually missed four seasons. He actually missed four seasons because he didn't wrap his willy and came back and played one year when he was 36 36 years old he played 32 games so that was the end of his career unfortunately um but i had a number six number six for you max and number six for will we got our first i think only trifecta only trifecta here will what do you got for me on magic johnson i was sold on magic uh, probably in the 80s i think it was the finals game where he played center slash point guard Mm. because kareem was out with an injury after i saw that man And then in the 90s, how he was running things, oh, man, it was hard not to put him in my top 10. Hard. You know what I mean? It was an easy decision. Yeah. 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 Number six for the three of us and number five for Jack, number seven for Zach. So, right. Okay. All right there. The number four player for the Don't top, don't Tell Mama Top 10 all-time NBA players is going to be the Big Dipper, Wilt the Stilt. Chamberlain, boys, come on now. Okay, he, this guy, listen up. People want to say, people want to bash on him because they say, oh, he, he played against plumbers. He played against electricians, whatever. He put up these numbers, boys. He was a four time MVP, two time champion, one time finals MVP, 10 time All NBA, two time All Defensive that weren't doing it all, all the, the years he played, 13 time All Star, 1960 Rookie of the Year. A seven-time scoring champion, which is the second highest you're going to hear today. An 11-time rebounding champion, which is the most you're going to hear. Ooh. And also an assist champion in 1968. Whoa. A, scoring, a seven-time scoring champion, 11-time rebounding champion, and an assist champion. He was number four for me. Max, what do you think about the Big Dipper? Top five for me. I had him number five. Uh, I switched them with one other player that we'll talk about soon, obviously. But, dude, I hate the analysts that say, oh, yeah, he was going up with people that were a foot uh, foot shorter than him. That's not fair. That's not fair. Or, stop it. Stop it. Then you could start saying the same thing about Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, he's 300 pounds. He's 50 pounds heavier than everybody else. Oh, that's not fair. Shut the hell up. This is a guy that averaged 30 points per game, 22.9 rebounds per game, because that's how it was in his time. Okay. He was the most dominating player of his time. Can we just respect that? I hate that. I hate that backlash uh, towards Wilt Chamberlain. This guy was unbelievable. Shot 54% from the field. It, this, he scored hundred points in a game, which another, a, a more analysts are going to say, Oh, that there's no real proof about that. There's no, there's no footage. There's no footage that that happened. It's like, well, then why are we talking about it? Something had to have happened, right? Something people, happened. Something happened. And that's why we all talk about it to this day. He scored 100 points. Okay. There were witnesses, viewers. They seen it. They were at the game. They pa- passed it along. Okay. It's in the record books. And yet there's still going to be those haters. It's like the same people that say the world is flat. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Will Chamberlain left Kansas in 1959, entered the league. And he led the league in scoring in his first six seasons and led the league in rebounding in his first four seasons. Holy shit. Starting off as a rookie, averages per game, points and rebounds, 37 and 27, 38 and 27, 50 and 25 in a season, 44 and 24 in a season, 37 and 22, 34 and 23, 39 and 23. My God. Oh, my gosh. Number four for me, number five for you, and my goodness gracious, slept on, disrespected, run amok, bamboozled. Will doesn't have him in the top ten. Oh, Will. Ah, <laughs> oh, 
Hey, like I said, he's way before my time. I don't see really that much footage of him. The only thing I know of Will Chamberlain is the movie Conan. That's about it. I have no clue besides the stories and stuff everybody talks about, but nah, sorry. The disrespect, my God, the numbers I just read off. Oh, rewind the episode. Of, re, rewind the episode a minute and listen to those numbers again. My God. The number three player for the Don't Tell Mama all-time top 10 is going to be Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This guy had six championships, or six MVPs, six championships, two finals MVPs, 15 All-NBA selections, 11 All-Defensive, 19 All-Star appearances, the 1970 Rookie of the Year, a two-time scoring champion, the 1976 rebounding champion and a four time block champion. Max, I had him right there at number three, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. How do you feel about him? I also had Kareem at number three. Okay. This is the, the uh, our, he's the best center in the game. I think he's the best center ever. This is a good debate. Okay. We, we, we'll talk about that. Maybe we'll individualize each position maybe in the summer, because we got a lot of things to talk about, right? A lot, a lot of time on our hands in the summertime. But I think he's the best center ever to play the game. With that skyhook dominating, how he dominated at UCLA with John Wooden uh, winning, mm -hmm. I forgot how many championships they won together. I, I, two, three, maybe. maybe Did he say all four? I don't even know. Uh, but six-time NBA champion, six-time MVP, okay? That's that's big time. That's mm -hmm. big time. Mm -hmm. And you gotta love that those uh, those '80s Lakers, Kareem and Magic. Oh my gosh, what a what a fun team that was! <laughs> Definitely, what a fun team. Twenty seasons, Kareem. Twenty seasons. Nice. Uh, so I got a number three. Max has a number three. Number three for Jack. Number four for Zach. And really pulling them down here was our guy Will. Number <laughs> eight, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. How are you feeling about Kareem? Kareem, definitely a top five player all time, especially if we're talking about positions. But uh, in my top 10, nah, he was definitely like a seven. Um, for the simple fact, he had a lot of help. Come on now. We can't forget about James Worthy, Magic Johnson. Uh, yeah, Cooper. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, has, he has some solid players. That team, big team. And uh, for all, I did forget about Tim Duncan on my top 10 list. But <laughs> I think when I think of Kareem, I think about Tim Duncan also. Yeah. With that hook. Yeah. Yeah. Good perspective there. Kareem, number three, though. Number three overall. The number two player, if they don't tell mama, top 10 all-time NBA players is going to be LeBron James, boys. 21 seasons in the league, still playing. Going to be 40 in December. He's a four-time MVP, four-time champion, four-time finals MVP, 20-time All-NBA selection. That's the most Six-time All-Defensive Selection, 20 All-Star appearances, that's the most. 2004 Rookie of the Year, he was a one-time scoring champion, the 2020 Assist Champion, and he's the NBA's all-time leading scorer. LeBron, number two for me, number two for Will, number two for Jack, number three for Zach, Max, Poland, LeBron, baby back, bitch, James, down at number four. Number four. What you got? What you got about your douchebag of the year candidate? Uh, yeah. Okay. So a lot of a lot of talk right now because you're saying, oh, well, you had Kareem before uh, LeBron, more championships and more MVPs. Okay. You want to talk about, well, uh, Kareem had all that help. Uh, so did LeBron. He moved to Miami to have Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh on his team. Okay. Oh, then he went back to Cleveland with Kyrie Irving. Let's all settle down. All right. Oh, then let's go to the Lakers with Anthony Davis. Let's like, all settle down. Yeah, let's okay. All right, right. Let's all settle settle down. Also, LeBron changed the game. All right, and I don't think it was for the better. Just so we're clear, he was the guy that decided to start switching teams, moving team to team, whatever I want to go mm -hmm. to, and look what's happened to the NBA. Now everyone does it. Okay, James Harden was going to make thirty four million dollars a year in Houston. He said, "Nah, trade me. It, I don't want to be here anymore. Trade me." And then look at him now. He's just going team to team. Okay. Players are just going back and forth, back and forth, whatever. You know, I got, that's just how it is now. Okay, whatever. But the last, thing, the last thing I think that he has changed is that he's the biggest actor on the court. Okay, the flopping. The, yeah, oh, my God, he is a Hollywood player. You, like, 
again, we go back, which we're going to talk about Michael Jordan. We're going to talk about Larry Bird. We already talked about Larry Bird. These guys weren't acting on the court, okay? These guys had blood on them, all right? They had blood, but they still got up. Michael Jordan, I think there was a scene where he had he was bleeding out of his nose, but he was shooting free throws. You know, it's like, dude, it's like that kind of mentality. And and, and LeBron doesn't even get touched, but he hits the ground. Ah! Flails <laughs> to the floor. Like he's in a musical on Broadway. It's I, I can't stand it but he's still a top five player I, in his early years in Cleveland and early years in Miami. I did like watching LeBron. Sure. Outstanding player moving over to the Lakers. I think it's just too much acting. I think it's too much Hollywood. That that's, that's why he, uh, why he's moved down to number four for me, how he changed the game. And I don't find it because uh, for the better. All right. Hell, I got to tip my hat to the longevity. We've never seen anybody do it for this long. At this age, look at guy who, guys who's played in their late 30s. They're averaging single-digit points, single-digit rebounds. He averaged 25, 7, and 8 last year. I know it's a different game, more up-tempo, more stats. 25, 7, and 8, he's not slowing down. I can see him playing three, four, five more years if he wants to. The longevity of his career, the all-time leading scorer, he's going to put that mark way up here because people people can't play this long. He's going to be 40 in December. My goodness. Number two for me, number four for Max, number two for Jack, number three for Zach, and number two for Will. Will, what you got for me on LeBron? For LeBron, like I said, we both pushing 40. That's my guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Definitely changed the game. Um, longevity is one of the biggest things for his career. And um, I do agree with uh, Max. Uh, the flip-flopping. He got every player in the country doing that. You know what I mean? You got college kids, high school. Yes. So I do I do hate that. Uh the acting thing, uh, yeah. I mean, to see the last couple years, he's he been in full rotation. You know what I mean? Just cut him another script. <laughs> but um all time leading scorer, and like I said, he's about to push that number even higher. I don't see him slowing down either, especially with his son coming into the league coming up soon. He's definitely gonna want to show him something too. So uh announced here recently Bronny is staying in the draft so we'll see we'll see what happens come come here in a couple of weeks gonna have the draft here in three four weeks we'll talk about that because yeah, uh, we'll, Bronny yeah. is real quick Bronny is a uh it's an everyday topic right now amongst analysts uh uh I, i'm hearing a lot of nepotism okay if he gets drafted by the lakers is it just is is this just a hollywood story Mm. It is. Is this, is this what they want? Because it's only going to generate more revenue, right? Because, oh, the father and the son, they get to play together. Oh. Everybody we'll talk, wants to see that. We'll talk. Eh, not me. I, th I think it's bullshit. They got, what, did, what did Bronny do in college? What did he do in college? I believe four points, two rebounds, and two assists off the bench for a USC team that blew. Saw him for his first college game. Col Colorado out here, right? Straight. Oh, was it? How about the time? <laughs> oh, nice, nice. <laughs> Will tell me about the time Brownie was running back into into the locker room before the game. What game was it again? Oh shit! Uh, I can't remember exact what team he was playing, but they were doing warm ups, and I was betting on USC to beat this team. This idiot jumps, hits his head off the wall. I can't even play now because he got concussed. <laughs> oh, and lost. Head jumps and up it to jumps up to. Uh, tap the scoreboard and going into the tunnel, hits his head, hits his damn dome on it. <laughs> Doesn't play, misses the game. Oh, gosh. Anyways, <laughs> the number one player that don't tell mama, all time NBA players, a unanimous number one, a perfect 50 score, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Five MVPs, six championships, six finals MVPs, 11 All-NBAs, nine All-Defensive selections, 14 All-Star appearances, the 1985 Rookie of the Year, a 10-time scoring champion. That's the most you're going to hear today, 10-time. He was also the Defensive Player of the Year in 1988, a three-time steel champion. And he was, of course, the only guy, I believe, on this list to go undefeated in the finals. Number one on everybody's board, Max, the GOAT, Michael Jordan. What do you got for me? I have never seen, I've never seen another player like Michael Jordan. 
I, I was lucky enough to watch him when I was a kid, like five, six, seven years old. Okay. I wish I was older to understand the game a little bit more. I understood putting a ball in a hoop is very impressive, but man, the, the, it, cause you know, growing up near Chicago, oh my goodness, the, everybody was wearing a Bulls shirt, a Bulls jersey. Okay. I, I, I have pictures of myself when I was three years old and this Bulls, you know, get up, you know, not even knowing what I'm wearing, what he brought to Chicago and what he brought to the NBA is something we, I, I don't think we're ever going to see it again. His versatility, his athletic ability to jump from the free throw line and dunk the damn basketball. Like it, it's unreal what he was able to accomplish. And let's not sleep on six for six mm-hmm. in the NBA finals. Two, three peats. The fact that he leaves, wants to go play baseball because his dad. Okay, there's speculation that, oh, gambling depths or whatever. What I don't know, what, whatever the fuck that was. Comes back, wins three more. Wins three more. I, I, enough said. This guy is the greatest ever. Yeah. Yeah, the drive of this guy, everything you said, Max, just adding on the drive, the competitiveness, the, you know, stories in practice, they're scrimmaging and – He's beating other teams ass by 10 points and then Phil Jackson switches him to the other team. And then he comes back and beats that beats the team he was originally on and love, love those stories, how he doesn't sleep. He's just golfing and Michael Jordan, the best ever. Will, what do you got for me? Definitely my goat. Definitely somebody I always grew up wanting to be. Um, I don't, I don't think there's no neighborhood where there wasn't a kid wanting to be like Michael Jordan, period. Mm -hmm. I had both of his jerseys. I had the uh, 23, then I had the 45 when he came back. You know what I mean? I always wanted to be, like I said, like Jordan. Uh, to this day, I don't see, like all the NBA players to this day, like they like Kobe, they like LeBron, but who they think they got it from? Got it from MJ, the GOAT, mm-hmm. greatest of all time. Hell yeah, no argument from anybody. Like I said, unanimous, number one, Michael Jordan. So the Don't Tell Mama top 10. From one to ten here is going to be averaged out from the five of us. It'll be Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Wilt Chamberlain, Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, Bill Russell, Timmy Duncan, Shaquille O'Neal, and Larry Bird, the hick from French Lick. That's our top ten. <laughs> That's our top ten. The four guys also receiving votes. Hakeem the Dream, Elijah Wan. Will had a number five, so that carried, oh. that carried some, some points right there. Okay. Dr. J, of course, with the jersey. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Jack. Jack might have slept on a couple guys. I don't know. He had Dirk and Durant in there, though. Jack had Dirk and Durant to finish finish out his uh, top ten. Instead of uh, Bill Russell and um, Shaq. Nope. He had Shaq. Timmy? He had Timmy. He had Timmy. Uh, Wilt? Wilt's in there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, don't matter. Don't matter. Larry, I, I, Larry, I, Larry. I already, I already cr- crumpled his paper over my Larry. head. Larry. <laughs> he didn't have Larry or, uh, what did I say first, Bill Russell. He didn't mm-hmm. have Larry or Bill Russell. That's a, that's all right. That's all right. He, you got Sorry. Dirk and Duran instead. Will, you know, you, you disrespected not only Tim Duncan, but the Big Dipper, Wilt Chamberlain. Who do you think you hate more between those two guys? <laughs> I would say Will Chamberlain just because I didn't get to see him play. Yeah. What do you think about that, Max, leaving leaving both those guys? Uh, I would say a word that we say here a lot on the podcast, and I'm just going to go ahead and say queef. All right, you queefed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Your next, the next jersey you get, it says queef on the back. All oh. right. <laughs> All right. Number zero for the hole that queefed in your face. <laughs> I think that's a queef. And then Dirk and Durant. But yeah, these these lists were pretty pretty solid. You know, Dr. J got a couple votes from guys, and uh, hell yeah, yeah. Max, tell me what your uh, toughest debate was here. Like, was it between two guys for a spot? Was it leaving somebody off? Was it at the top, in the middle? What was yeah. what was tough for you? What- Actually, my top five. I would say my top five was the toughest. I was debating between uh, Wilt, LeBron, and Magic. Uh, mm-hmm. it, I, I had I had Wilt at number four, and then LeBron, and I was and then I definitely went through the stats, and I was like, no, no, no. I'm still giving it to LeBron. So that was a big one. And then also at the very end, Hakeem Olajuwon and Shaquille O'Neal. I was debating that for a while, but then I finally was like, no, Shaq was 
dude, just unstoppable, unstoppable. So those are the biggest for me. How about you, Cole Breezy? What were you debating? Bill Russell was tough for me to place with those 11 championships. He was tough for me. to. I ended up putting him number five. Uh, um, definitely Kobe and Shaq was a debate. But I had to I had to definitely get Larry on there. And, yeah, I, th I think, you know, Max, you and I have the same top ten guys. Not different order, obviously. Uh, Zach's got nine of those guys, and the the other two, Will and Jack, have eight of the top same top ten. So pretty much, we're we're all we're all lock lockstep here. Good. Will Will was it? What was a debate for you? I think the toughest for me was uh, Hakeem and Magic because mm. uh, Hakeem and Magic. If I didn't pick them two, it was going to be Tim Duncan and Will Chamberlain. So that's where it really really broke down for me. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, that's gonna do it, boys. That's wow. uh, that's, that's a hell of a top ten right there. I wanna, I wanna just update everybody on the NBA playoffs real quick before we go home. Minnesota, they got Game Four in Dallas last night to make that series three-one. Boston is already in the finals, waiting the winner. Max, let's get a prediction from you. Is Dallas gonna move on, and then who, who Boston, Dallas, or Boston, Minnesota? Who, who's cutting down the nets? Who's raising a banner? It's Boston, Dallas, because there's no way Minnesota's coming down from 3-0. The only time we've ever seen it was the Boston Red Sox taking down the Yankees back in 2001, 2003, 2004, 2004. That was the only time in the history of sports that we've ever seen a team come back from 3-0 and win four in a row and then win the whole thing. So it's going to be Dallas taking on Boston, but I got Boston going all the way. We'll talk about this probably next week, Cole Breezy, but the Boston Celtics are a better team. Will you give any, given Minnesota any shot to come back in this series? And then who comes out of the West and can they take down the Celtics? I was rocking with the team Wolves after they beat the Nuggets, but you know, the they have no chance. And um, I got uh, the Mavs winning in six against Boston. Mm. Oh, okay. Wow. Going Luka. Wow. Going Luka. Wow. I like it. You know, boys, I, I liked what I saw from Minnesota last night. I, I think they got a rising star. I... I I'm back and forth on this one because I had Minnesota to start. Max, you, got, you made a great pick uh, taking Dallas with, with Luka and Kyrie. Boy, that, that's a hell of an offensive backcourt. They got three games they got to win. Two of them are going to be at home. Maybe Big Cat gets out of his kennel, stops licking his paws, gets, gets enough kibble, and Rudy Gobert, Rudy Gobert finds, what, finds out whatever he's doing, finds his defense again. I'm going to say first time ever. Oh, I I believe best of seven series up 3-0. I believe they're 156 and 0. I think it's going to be 156 and 1. The Minnesota Timberwolves, Mike Conley, Indianapolis native. I like Jaden McDaniel's length. Nas Reed, the sixth man off the bench. Minnesota's a solid team. I just saw him take down the Nuggets when was it three games here in Denver? I believe they won three games in Denver. Maybe maybe I'm smoking something here in the Mile High City, but I like what I saw from Minnesota. I got them going on the finals, but damn it, I think they're going to blow their load doing all that. Boston's got eight days off to wait for June June 6th. So Boston Celtics, I think, are going to be our NBA champion. I'll, get Minnesota, I'll give Minnesota one more win. Series okay. is done, 4-2. to two. I'll give them one more. And that's generous. Well, boys, that's going to do us here for the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. A hell of, hell of an episode. Before we get out of here, we got a couple birthday shout outs to give out. Will over here. Oh. Tomorrow. Oh, happy turning birthday, the Will. Big 4 happy birthday. Big 40. Will how, Will, Will, how you feeling about turning 40, big dog? Oh, man, I mean, I never thought I would make it this far, honestly, especially yeah. where I'm from. That's a big one. But uh, I'm excited, man. Definitely excited. Got my friends, family in town. You know what I mean? So we definitely going to do it big. Well, happy birthday, Will. Appreciate it. Happy birthday to Will. And, of course, my guy over here, Maxie Faulkner, on Saturday, going to be turning 32. Mm. Happy, birthday. <laughs> happy birthday episode. That's the Gemini's got to stick together, man. Yeah, Gemini's. We, we know what's up. We definitely know what's up. What's the plans for your birthday, Max? Oh, we're going to keep it chill. I got a little bit of work in the morning, but my wife and I, we're going to go on a nice hike. And then we're going to go to the Yazoo Brewing Company because I need some Yazoo. cold ones. I need some cold ones Yazoo. for my birthday. Uh, then we're hey. coming back here uh, and we're just going to eat. 
eat some food and stuff. Nothing big. I, I, I don't go too crazy on my birthdays. All right. Just some brews, chilling, get a workout in. That's, that's, it's relaxing to me. All right. I'm sure, not a big sure. party. I'm not in college anymore, everybody. Not in sure, college. Sure. Anymore. Sure. And definitely uh, shout out to Will. The beat that you're hearing right now is from Will. He made this one smooth beat. Gonna get be getting more from Will. So look out for that. And damn it, look out for some more baseball talk and the Olympics coming up, Max. Yeah. Any, any other housekeeping things besides the douchebag pull before we get out of here? No, nothing too much other than, hey, thank you everybody again for coming out to the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. 100 episodes. Take a look. Whoa. Take a look right there. That's Will Chamberlain, top five player 100. of all time. 100. 100. 100. But man, we appreciate all of you. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe here. And I'll, oh my goodness, Cole Breezy. 100 episodes. What a great accomplishment. And what an episode. This was a lot of fun. We got to start doing this for football. We should do yeah, this for yeah. baseball. We yeah. could do an all time players of all time. And that would include, I don't know, golf, hockey. Like, there, there's there's already players coming to my mind Always that I could slip in that top 10. Yeah. yeah. It, could be, it, could be, it could be really fun. But the Olympics coming up, everybody. Woo. We should do a top 10 Olympians. Top 10 Olympians? Oh my god. We'll have to talk about that. We'll have to talk about that. Definitely looking forward to what's on deck. Will, appreciate you coming out here today. NBA Pittsburgh representative. Thank you for coming out. Anything you got to tell the people before you get out of here? Thank you guys for having me again. And make sure you guys subscribe and continue to continue. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you, Will. Thank you. Hell yeah. Max, can't wait to talk to you next week. Already thinking about it, brother. Yeah. Hell, hell yeah, go Breezy. I don't even know what's in store for us next week, but everyone, don't lick your paws like Big Cat out there because he's definitely going home early. All right. He's going to be he's gonna be sitting out. Of, how many cats does he probably have in this house? Uh, he's probably a big cat guy. Half a dozen. Half, half a dozen. dozen. Yeah, he's a cat guy. Cat yeah. guy. <laughs> Meow. Inclu- including his girlfriend. Probably acts like a cat. 